During World War I, the German Empire was one of the central powers that lost the war. It began participation with a conflict after the declaration of war against Serbia by its ally, Austria-Hungary. German forces fought the Allies on both the Eastern and Western fronts, although German territory itself remained relatively safe from widespread invasion for most of the war, except for a brief period in 1914 when East Prussia was invaded. A tight blockade imposed by the British Navy caused severe food shortages in the cities, especially in the winter of 1916-1917, known as the Turnip Winter. Overview the German population responded to the outbreak of war in 1914 with a complex mix of emotions, in a similar way to the populations in other countries of Europe. Notions of overt enthusiasm known as the spirit of 1914 have been challenged by more recent scholarship. The German government, dominated by the Junkers, thought of the war as a way to end Germany's disputes with rivals France, Russia and Britain. The beginning of war was presented in authoritarian Germany as the chance for the nation to secure our place under the sun, as the foreign minister Bernhard von Barwon Korterlo had put it, which was readily supported by prevalent nationalism among the public. The Kaiser and the German establishment hoped the war would unite the public behind the monarchy, and lessen the threat posed by the dramatic growth of the Social Democratic Party of Germany, which had been the most vocal critic of the Kaiser and the Reichstag before the war. Despite its membership in the Second International, the Social Democratic Party of Germany ended its differences with the imperial government and abandoned its principles of internationalism to support the war effort. It soon became apparent that Germany was not prepared for a war lasting more than a few months. At first, little was done to regulate the economy for a wartime footing, and the German war economy would remain badly organized throughout the war. Germany depended on imports of food and raw materials, which were stopped by the British blockade of Germany. Food prices were first limited, then rationing was introduced. The winter of 1916-17 was called turnip winter, because the potato harvest was poor and people ate animal feed including vile tasting turnips. During the war from August 1914 to mid-1919, the excess deaths over peacetime caused by malnutrition and high rates of exhaustion and disease and despair came to about 474,000 civilians. 1914 a Euro 15. The German army opened the war on the Western Front with a modified version of the Schlieffen Plan, designed to quickly attack France through neutral Belgium before turning southwards to encircle the French army on the German border. The Belgians fought back and sabotaged their rail system to delay the Germans. The Germans did not expect this and were delayed, and responded with systematic reprisals on civilians, killing nearly 6,000 Belgian non-combatants, including women and children, and burning 25,000 houses and buildings. The plan called for the right flank of the German advance to converge on Paris and initially, the Germans were very successful, particularly in the Battle of the Frontiers. By September 12, the French with assistance from the British forces halted the German advance east of Paris at the First Battle of the Marne. The last days of this battle signified the end of mobile warfare in the West. The French offensive into Germany launched on August 7 with the Battle of Mulhouse had limited success. In the East, only one field army defended East Prussia and when Russia attacked in this region it diverted German forces intended for the Western Front. Germany defeated Russia in a series of battles collectively known as the First Battle of Tannenberg, but this diversion exacerbated problems of insufficient speed of advance from railheads not foreseen by the German general staff. The Central Powers were thereby denied a quick victory and forced to fight a war on two fronts. The German army had fought its way into a good defensive position inside France and had permanently incapacitated 230,000 more French and British troops than it had lost itself. Despite this, communications problems and questionable command decisions cost Germany the chance of obtaining an early victory. 1916 1916 was characterized by two great battles on the Western Front, at Verdun and Somme. They each lasted most of the year, achieved minimal gains, and drained away the best soldiers of both sides. Verdun became the iconic symbol of the murderous power of modern defensive weapons, with 280,000 German casualties, 
and 315,000 French. At Somme, there were over 400,000 German casualties, against over 600,000 Allied casualties. At Verdun, the Germans attacked what they considered to be a weak French salient which nevertheless the French would defend for reasons of national pride. The Somme was part of a multinational plan of the Allies to attack on different fronts simultaneously. German woes were also compounded by Russia's Grand Brusilov offensive, where although Germany suffered less than their allies with 150,000 of the 770,000 Central Powers casualties, were simultaneous to the Somme offensive and with German already committed to the Verdun offensive. German experts are divided in their interpretation of the Somme. Some say it was a standoff but most see it as a British victory and argue it marked the point at which German morale began a permanent decline and the strategic initiative was lost, along with irreplaceable veterans and confidence. 1917. Enthusiasm faded with the enormous numbers of casualties, the dwindling supply of manpower, the mounting difficulties on the home front, and the never-ending flow of casualty reports. A grimmer and grimmer attitude began to prevail amongst the general population. Morale was helped by victories against Serbia, Greece, Italy, and Russia which made great gains for the Central Powers. Morale was at its greatest since 1914 at the end of 1917 and beginning of 1918 with the defeat of Russia following her rise into revolution, and the German people braced for what Ludendorff said would be the peace offensive in the West. 1918. In spring 1918, Germany realized the time was running out. It prepared for the decisive strike with new armies and new tactics, hoping to win the war on the Western Front before millions of American soldiers appeared in battle. General Erich Ludendorff and Field Marshal Paul von Hindenburg had full control of the army, they had a large supply of reinforcements moved from the Eastern Front, and they trained stormtroopers with new tactics to race through the trenches and attack the enemy's command and communication centers. The new tactics would indeed restore mobility to the Western Front, but the German army was too optimistic. During the winter of 1917-18 it was quiet on the Western Front the Euro-British casualties averaged only 3,000 a week. Serious attacks were impossible in the winter because of the deep caramel-thick mud. Quietly the Germans brought in their best soldiers from the Eastern Front, selected elite storm troops, and trained them all winter in the new tactics. With stopwatch timing, the German artillery would lay down a sudden, fearsome barrage just ahead of its advancing infantry. Moving in small units, firing light machine guns, the storm troopers would bypass enemy strong points, and head directly for critical bridges, command posts, supply dumps and, above all, artillery batteries. By cutting enemy communications they would paralyze response in the critical first half hour. By silencing the artillery they would break the enemy's firepower. Rigid schedules sent in two more waves of infantry to mop up the strong points that had been bypassed. The shock troops frightened and disoriented the first line of defenders, who would flee in panic. In one instance an easy-going allied regiment broke and fled. Reinforcements rushed in on bicycles. The panicky men seized the bikes and beat an even faster retreat. The stormtrooper tactics provided mobility, but not increased firepower. Eventually a Euro in 1939 and 1940 a Euro the formula would be perfected with the aid of dive bombers and tanks, but in 1918 the Germans lacked both. Luden deferred by attacking the British first in 1918, instead of the French. He mistakenly thought the British to be too uninspired to respond rapidly to the new tactics. The exhausted, dispirited French perhaps might have folded. The German assaults on the British were ferocious a Euro the largest of the entire war. At the Somme River in March, 63 divisions attacked in a blinding fog. No matter, the German lieutenants had memorized their maps and their orders. The British lost 270,000 men, fell back 40 miles, and then held. They quickly learned how to handle the new German tactics, fall back, abandon the trenches, let the attackers overextend themselves, and then counterattack. They gained an advantage in firepower from their artillery and from tanks used as mobile pillboxes that could retreat and counterattack at will. In April Ludendorff hit the British again, 
inflicting 305,000 casualties a euro, but he lacked the reserves to follow up. Ludendorff launched five great attacks between March and July, inflicting a million British and French casualties. The Western Front now had opened up a euro the trenches were still there but the importance of mobility now reasserted itself. The Allies held. The Germans suffered as many casualties as they inflicted, including most of their precious stormtroopers. The new German replacements were under aged youth or embittered middle-aged family men in poor condition. They were not inspired by the Elan of 1914, nor thrilled with Batley a Euro they hated it, and some began talking of revolution. Ludendorff could not replace his losses, nor could he devise a new brainstorm that might somehow snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. The British likewise were bringing in boys and men aged 50, but since their home front was in good condition, and since they could see the Americans arriving steadily, their morale was higher. The great German spring offensive was a race against time, for everyone could see the Americans were training millions of fresh young men who would eventually arrive on the Western Front. The attrition warfare now caught up to both sides. Germany had used up all the best soldiers they had, and still had not conquered much territory. The British were out of fresh manpower, the French nearly so. Berlin had calculated it would take months for the Americans to ship all their men and supplies to but the U.S. troops arrived much sooner, as they left their supplies behind, and relied on British and French artillery, tanks, airplanes, trucks and equipment. Berlin also assumed that Americans were fat, undisciplined and unaccustomed to hardship and severe fighting. They soon realized their mistake. The Germans reported that the qualities of the Americans individually may be described as remarkable. They are physically well set up, their attitude is good. They lack at present only training and experience to make formidable adversaries. The men are in fine spirits and are filled with naive assurance. By September 1918, the Central Powers were exhausted from fighting, and the American forces were pouring into France at a rate of 10,000 a day. The decisive Allied counter-offensive, known as the Hundred Days Offensive, began on August 8, 1918 a Euro, what Ludendorff called the Black Day of the German Army. The Allied armies advanced steadily as German defences faltered. Although German armies were still on enemy soil as the war ended, the generals, the civilian leadership a Euro, and indeed the soldiers in the Fiopli Euro knew all was hopeless. They started looking for scapegoats. The hunger and popular dissatisfaction with the war precipitated revolution throughout Germany. By November 11 Germany had virtually surrendered. The Kaiser and all the royal families had abdicated, and the empire had been replaced by the Alimar Republic. Home Front. Equals War Fever equals. The spirit of 1914 was the overwhelming, enthusiastic support of all elements of the population for war in 1914. In the Reichstag, the vote for credits was unanimous, with all the socialists joining in. One professor testified to a great single feeling of moral elevation of soaring of religious sentiment, in short, the ascent of a whole people to the heights. At the same time, there was a level of anxiety. Most commentators predicted the short victorious war a euro, but that hope was dashed in a matter of weeks, as the invasion of Belgium bogged down and the French army held in front of Paris. The Western Front became a killing machine as neither army moved more than a few hundred yards at a time. Industry in late 1914 was in chaos, unemployment soared while it took months to reconvert to munitions productions. In 1916, the Hindenburg program called for the mobilization of all economic resources to produce artillery, shells, and machine guns, turkey shooter. Church bells and copper roofs were ripped out and melted down. Equals economy equals Germany had no plans for mobilizing its civilian economy for the war effort, and no stockpiles of food or critical supplies had been made. Germany had to improvise rapidly. All major political sectors supported the war at least at first, including the socialists. Early in the war industrialist Walter Rath now held senior posts in the raw materials department of the war ministry, while becoming chairman of AEG upon his father's death in 1915. Rath now played the key role in convincing the War Ministry to set up the War Raw Materials Department. 
he was in charge of it from August 1914 to March 1915 and established the basic policies and procedures. His senior staff were on loan from industry. KRA focused on raw materials threatened by the British blockade, as well as supplies from occupied Belgium and France. It set prices and regulated the distribution to vital war industries. It began the development of ersatz raw materials. KRA suffered many inefficiencies caused by the complexity and selfishness KRA encountered from commerce, industry, and the government. While the KRA handled critical raw materials, the crisis over food supplies grew worse. The mobilization of so many farmers and horses, and the shortages of fertilizer, steadily reduced the food supply. Prisoners of war were sent to work on farms, and many women and elderly men took on work roles. Supplies that had once come in from Russia and Austria were cut off. The concept of total war in World War I meant that food supplies had to be redirected towards the armed forces and, with German commerce being stopped by the British blockade, German civilians were forced to live in increasingly meager conditions. Food prices were first controlled. Bread rationing was introduced in 1915 and worked well. The cost of bread fell. Allen says there were no signs of starvation and states, the sense of domestic catastrophe one gains from most accounts of food rationing in Germany is exaggerated. However Howard argues that hundreds of thousands of civilians died from malnutrition a euro usually from a typhus or a disease their weakened body could not resist. Conditions deteriorated rapidly on the home front, with severe food shortages reported in all urban areas. The causes involved the transfer of so many farmers and food workers into the military, combined with the overburdened railroad system, shortages of coal, and the British blockade that cut off imports from abroad. The winter of 1916-1917 was known as the turnip winter, because that hardly edible vegetable, usually fed to livestock, was used by people as a substitute for potatoes and meat, which were increasingly scarce. Thousands of soup kitchens were opened to feed the hungry people, who grumbled that the farmers were keeping the food for themselves. Even the army had to cut the rations for soldiers. Morale of both civilians and soldiers continued to sink. The drafting of miners reduced the main energy source, coal. The textile factories produced army uniforms, and warm clothing for civilians ran short. The device of using ersatz materials, such as paper and cardboard for cloth and leather proved unsatisfactory. Soap was in short supply, as was hot water. All the cities reduced tram services, cut back on street lighting, and closed down theatres and cabarets. The food supply increasingly focused on potatoes and bread, it was harder and harder to buy meat. The meat ration in late 1916 was only 31% of peacetime, and it fell to 12% in late 1918. The fish ration was 51% in 1916, and none at all by late 1917. The rations for cheese, butter, rice, cereals, eggs and lard were less than 20% of peacetime levels. In 1917 the harvest was poor all across Europe, and the potato supply ran short, and Germans substituted almost inedible turnips. The turnip winter of 1916 a Euro 17 was remembered with bitter distaste for generations. Early in the war introduced bread rationing, and the system worked fairly well, albeit with shortfalls during the turnip winter and summer of 1918. White bread used imported flour and became unavailable, but there was enough rye or rye potato flour to provide a minimal diet for all civilians. German women were not employed in the army, but large numbers took paid employment in industry and factories, and even larger numbers engaged in volunteer services. Housewives were taught how to cook without milk, eggs or fat. Agencies helped widows find work. Banks, insurance companies and government offices for the first time hired women for clerical positions. Factories hired them for unskilled labor a euro by December 1917, half the workers in chemicals, metals, and machine tools were women. Laws protecting women in the workplace were relaxed and factories set up canteens to provide food for their workers, lest their productivity fall off. The food situation in 1918 was better, because the harvest was better, but serious shortages continued, 
with high prices, and a complete lack of condiments and fresh fruit. Many migrants had flocked into cities to work in industry, which made for overcrowded housing. Reduced coal supplies left everyone in the cold. Daily life involved long working hours, poor health, and little or no recreation, and increasing fears for the safety of loved ones in the army and in prisoner of war camp. The men who returned from the front were those who had been permanently crippled. Wounded soldiers who had recovered were sent back to the trenches. Defeat and revolt. Many Germans wanted an end to the war and increasing numbers of Germans began to associate with the political left, such as the Social Democratic Party and the more radical independent Social Democratic Party which demanded an end to the war. The third reason was the entry of the United States into the war in April 1917, which changed the long-run balance of power in favor of the Allies. The end of October 1918, in Kiel, in northern Germany, saw the beginning of the German Revolution of 1918 Euro 19. Civilian dock workers led a revolt and convinced many sailors to join them. The revolt quickly spread to other cities. Meanwhile, Hindenburg and the senior generals lost confidence in the Kaiser and his government. In November 1918, with internal revolution, a stalemated war, Bulgaria and the Ottoman Empire suing for peace, Austria-Hungary falling apart from multiple ethnic tensions, and pressure from the German high command, the Kaiser and all German ruling princes abdicated. On November 9, 1918, the Social Democrat Philip Skederman proclaimed a republic, in cooperation with the business and middle classes, not the revolting workers. The new government led by the German Social Democrats called for and received an armistice on November 11, 1918. In practice it was a surrender, and the Allies kept up the food blockade to guarantee an upper hand. The war was over. The history books closed on the German Empire. It was succeeded by the democratic, yet flawed, Weimar Republic. Seven million soldiers and sailors were quickly demobilized, and they became a conservative voice that drowned out the radical left in cities such as Kiel and Berlin. The radicals formed the Spartakusch Bund and later the Communist Party of Germany. Germany lost the war because it was decisively defeated by a stronger military power. It was out of soldiers and ideas, and was losing ground every day by October 1918. Nevertheless, it was still in France when the war ended on November 11 giving die-hard nationalists the chance to blame the civilians back home for betraying the army and surrendering. This was the false stab in the back legend that soured German politics in the 1920s and caused a distrust of democracy and the Weimar government. War deaths. Out of a population of 65 million, Germany suffered 2.1 million military deaths and 430,000 civilian deaths due to wartime causes, plus about 17,000 killed in Africa and the other overseas colonies. The Allied blockade continued until July 1919 causing severe additional hardships. Notes Bibliography, Watson, Alexander. Ring of Steel, Germany and Austria-Hungary in World War I, except. Equals Military equals, Cecil, Lamar, Wilhelm Du, Emperor and Exile, 1900-1941-2, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, University of North Carolina Press, pages 176, ISBN 0. 8078-2283-3, OCLC 186744003, Chickering, Roger, A. L. Eds. Great War, Total War, Combat and Mobilization on the Western Front, 1914-1918. ISBN 0-521-77352-0, Hugh W. German and Austrian Aviation of World War I, a pictorial chronicle of the airmen and aircraft that forged German air power. Osprey Pub Company. ISBN 1-84176-069-2. 96PGS. Cross, Wilbur, Zeppelins of World War I, ISBN 1-55778-382-9. Holger H. The First World War, Germany and Austria-Hungary 1914-1918, Mostly Military, Horn, 
John, ed. A Companion to World War I. Hubach, Walther. Bacchus, Oswald P., Germany and the Central Powers in the World War, 1914 Euro 1918, Lawrence, Kansas, University of Kansas, OCLC 250441891, Kitchen, Martin. The Silent Dictatorship, The Politics of the German High Command under Hindenburg and Ludendorff, 1916 Euro 1918, Morrow, John. German Air Power in World War I. Contains design and production figures, as well as economic influences. Sheldon, Jack. The German Army on the Somme, 1914-1916. Barnsley, Pen and Sword Books Limited. ISBN 1-84415-269-3. Homefront equals, Alan, Keith. Sharing Scarcity, Bread Rationing in the First World War in Berlin. 1914 Euro 1923, Journal of Social History 32 No. 2 pages 371 Euro 96. Armson, Robert. Total Warfare and Compulsory Labor, A Study of the Military-Industrial Complex in Germany During World War I Bailey, S.A. Euro OE The Berlin Strike of 1918, Central European History 13 No. 2 pages 158 Euro 74. Bell. Archibald. A History of the Blockade of Germany and the Countries Associated with Her in the Great War, Austria-Hungary, Bulgaria, and Turkey, 1914 Euro 1918, Broadbury, Stephen and Mark Harrison, eds. The Economics of World War I ISBN 0-521-85212-9. Covers France, UK, USA, Russia, Italy, Germany. Austria-Hungary, the Ottoman Empire, and the Netherlands, Burchart, Lefha. A Euro OE The Impact of the War Economy on the Civilian Population of Germany During the First and the Second World Wars, in the German Military in the Age of Total War, edited by Wilhelm Deist, 111 A Euro 36. Leamington Spa, Berg, 1985. Chickering, Roger. Imperial Germany and the Great War. 1914 Euro 1918, Wide Ranging Survey, Daniel, Ute. The War from Within, German Working Class Women in the First World War, Daisy, Robin. Women's Work and the Family, Women Garment Workers in Berlin and Hamburg Before the First World War, in the German Family, Essays on the Social History of the Family in 19th and 20th Century Germany, Edited by Richard J. Evans and W. L. E. Pages 221 Euro 53. Davis, Belinda J. Home Fires Burning, Food, Politics, and Everyday Life in World War I Berlin Online Edition, Dobson, Sean. Authority and Upheaval in Leipzig, 1910 Euro 1920. Domansky, Elizabeth. Militarization and Reproduction in World War I Germany, in Society, Culture. And the State in Germany, 1870 a Euro 1930, edited by Jeff Ellie Pages 427 a Euro 64. Donson, Andrew. Why did German youth become fascists? Nationalist males born 1900 to 1908 in War and Revolution, Social History, August 2006, Volume 31 Issue 3, Pages 337 a Euro 358, Feldman, Gerald D. The Political and Social Foundations of Germany's Economic Mobilization, 1914-1916, Armed Forces in Society 3 No. 1 pages 121 a Euro 145 online, Feldman, Gerald. Army, Industry, and Labor in Germany, 1914 a Euro 1918, Ferguson, Nile The Pity of War, Cultural and Economic Themes, Worldwide, Hardarch, Gerd. The First World War 1914-1918, Economics, Hilwig, Holger H. The First World War, Germany and Austria-Hungary 1914-1918, One Third on the Home Front, Howard, N.P. The Social and Political Consequences of the Allied Food Blockade of Germany, 1918-19, German History 11 No. 2 pages 161 Euro 88 online, Cocker, Jar 1 Quarter A G E N. 
Facing Total War, German Society, 1914-1918. Online at ACLSE Books, Lee, Joe. German Administrators and Agriculture During the First World War, in War and Economic Development, edited by J. M. Winter. Marquis, H. G. Words as Weapons, Propaganda in Britain and Germany During the First World War. Journal of Contemporary History 12, 467 a Euro 98. McKibben, David. War and Revolution in Leipzig, 1914 a Euro 1918. Socialist Politics and Urban Evolution in a German City, Moella, Robert G. Dimensions of Social Conflict in the Great War, A View from the Countryside, Central European History 14 No. 2 pages 142 a Euro 68, Moella, Robert G. German Peasants and Agrarian Politics, 1914 a Euro 1924, The Rhineland and Westphalia Online Edition, Offer, Avenair. The First World War, an Agrarian Interpretation, on Food Supply of Britain and Germany, Osborne, Eric. Britain's Economic Blockade of Germany, 1914-1919, Ritchie, Alexandra. Faust's Metropolis, A History of Berlin pages 234 a Euro 83, Ryder, A.J. The German Revolution of 1918, Sine, Marion. The Allied Blockade of Germany, 1914 a Euro 1916, Stege, Paul. Black Market, Cold War, Everyday Life in Berlin, 1946 to 1949 Excerpt and Text Search, Terrain, John. An Actual Revolutionary Situation in 1917 There was little to sustain German morale at home, History Today 28 No. 1 pages 14 a Euro 22, online, Tobin, Elizabeth. War and the Working Class. The Case of Darwin Quarter Seldorf, 1914 a Euro 1918, Central European History 13 No. 3 pages 257 a Euro 98, Tree Bell, Armin. Consumption in Wartime Germany, in the Upheaval of War, Family, Work, and Welfare in Europe, 1914 a Euro 1918 edited by Richard Wall and J. M. Winter pages 159 a Euro 96. Osborne, Cornley. Pregnancy is a woman's active service, in the upheaval of war, family, work, and welfare in Europe, 1914 a Euro 1918 edited by Richard Wall and J. M. Winter, pages 289 a Euro 416. Behay, Geoffrey. The Spirit of 1914. Militarism, Myth and Mobilization in Germany, Welch, David. Germany, Propaganda and Total War. 1914-1918, Winter, J., and Jean-Louis Robert, eds. Capital Cities at War, Paris, London, Berlin 1914-1919, 30 chapters 1200 pp. Comprehensive coverage by scholars Vol 1 excerpt. Vol 2 excerpt and text search, Winter, J. Sites of Memory, Sites of Mourning, The Great War in European Cultural History, Zeman, Benjamin. War Experiences in Rural Germany, 1914-1923 Online Edition. External links, German, Der Erste Weltkrieg, German, WWI at German Historic Museum Online, posters of the German military government in the General Government Warschau from World War I, 1915-1916 from the collections at the Library of Congress.